The differences are, we're talking about are not major differences in the text. The differences that we're talking about, again, are spellings. Um, or a word being substituted like instead of um, on top, uh, or let's see, like over instead of above or something like that. In other words, it may be a different word in the Hebrew, but the, similar. And my point in this is that the Qumran text were not good text of the Scripture. And that would be the reason that they haven't been the received text throughout history. They were a sect or a division, and they had their text that went off this way and stayed over there. And God's people never used it. And that's why it was lost for all those years, because it was not a good text. Same kind of issue with the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, if you could understand it that way. Well, small percentage of the LXX was found. They, there were a lot of attacks made even against the Greek text, and they found a lot of things that supported it. Uh, let me see if I've got... Okay, I think, I'll come, I think we'll get back to the Dead Sea Scrolls. That was kind of an excursus. Then there's a... Here are some more texts that are prior to 400 BC, or that are 400 BC to AD 135, and these were found at Masada. Masada was a place that, before the destruction of Jerusalem in the, what, 80, 68 to 72 approximately, Masada was the place that they had built, kind of as the Jewish people had built as a last stand. And so it was kind of a fort or a fortress. And there were some texts that were found there that had been swiftly buried. And, uh, but they exist today. They're found there. Um, they was occupied by zealots and their family in 66 to 73 when Rome came to crush the rebellion. And in 1963 to 65, fragments of Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Ezekiel, Psalms, plus a few apocryphal texts in Hebrew, Ecclesiasticus, and fragments of the book of Jubilees. Um, by the way, and I think we'll get back to the Dead Sea Scrolls in a minute, but if we don't, let me help you to understand what the Dead Sea Scrolls were. They weren't just scripture. We talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls, people are like, oh, it's a scripture. No, there was scripture found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. But there were also found horoscopes. There were uh, marriage contracts, um, a treasure map that was written in copper, uh, and a lot of things. It was just that it was all the writing of the individuals at Qumran, and uh, most of their writings, by the way, are one-inch fragments that had been buried under the floor, I think, of Cave 7 because, of the, um, because they were about to be destroyed. The people were about to be destroyed, so they hid the text. So there's a lot of misunderstanding. People think, well, they were found in these ostraca or these uh, jars, and they had these perfect texts that had been preserved forever. No, in Cave 4 there were some, but in the rest of the caves, just fragments. And in Cave 4, those documents weren't all Scripture. And so understand when you talk about differences, the differences would be that they weren't Scripture. You know, it would be like somebody were to, um, if my office were to be buried by a volcano and my books were to be preserved, and then people were to come back a couple thousand years from now and say, you know, uh, the scripture in the pastor's office, uh, the script in pastor's office has variations from the text today, and they were to pull all the different books off my shelves that were in scripture and count those things as differences. That's not honest, but that's what the scholars are throwing at you, and I would just say to you, uh, you ought to wonder what their purpose is in doing that. Why would they do that? Why would they say something like that and not qualify their statement? Well, because they want to undermine the scripture. That's why they're doing it, and you ought to understand those people and know where they're coming from. But one of the things that was a great value, um, both in, in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well as Masada, was that the Masoretic text type. See, that the, we talked about the consonantal roots, and the Masoretes were the, the copiers or the scribes, or the, the individuals who copied the scripture. And, you know, 2,000 years later, people said, well, the Masoretes changed the text. Well, one of the things we found when we rediscovered the Dead Sea Scrolls was that they matched. They were the same. And so they used the Masoretic text. The vowel pointings would have been the same. And so they confirmed that the Masoretes didn't just make up some text or didn't just alter the text, but that they matched up. And so it proved that and silenced those arguments. It's an argument that's been set aside since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, or at least it should have been. Um, uh, in 400 B.C. to A.D. 135, there's two other salts, Naha Hever and Naha Selim. And during this time of translation, the consonantal text remains unaltered. By the way, uh, you see in the prior to 400 B.C., the consonantal text is unchanged. Uh, this is a time period that we can document that the consonantal text, you can say, well, the vowel points differ or there weren't vowel points, and that's a difference from there being vowel points, and so the text is different. My point is that the three consonantal roots that were originally given in the original Hebrew language were the same. There's no change in them between the Masoretic text. And that would be in this time period. We, we've got to really fly. We're getting started on our information. It's time to quit. A.D. 135 to 1000, this would be the time period of the Talmudic 
or Masoretic period. Of course, the Talmud would be the writings of the uh, religious leaders, and the Masoretes would have been the copyist of the scripture. Question, did the Sulfurim, and they were called counters, why would they have counters in the Masoretes? Did they alter the consonantal text they received from previous generations? Well, before we had the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and these discoveries in the 1900s, uh, that was the argument that was made. The Masoretes altered the text. When we found it, we said, no, they didn't. So the question we got asked is, did, did the Sulfurim, what were Sulfurim? Somebody tell me. It's right there on the overhead. They were counters. What did they do? Well, they counted each letter, each word on a page, and they counted the position of the page. The Masoretes would copy it, and the Sulfurim would make sure they did it right. Well, that gives you an idea that they had a high view of the Scripture and, and wanted it to be so accurately that even a copy had to be copied to the same place on a page, and it couldn't be made any different. The Talmudic period, Sulfurim or Jew, Jewish rabbis would have copied the Scripture at this time, 135 to 500. And uh, preservation devices were passed on orally, and what we're talking about by preservation devices are the triconsonantal root. Which word was it? Which word was it? Um, is it the, um, you know, what are the vowel points that belong in Jehovah, for instance? Well, they wouldn't have known that because they would have never said the name Jehovah. Only a prophet could use God's name Jehovah. But they would have known, this word has a possibility of three, and they had people whose job it was to know which word belonged. And they were, a gentleman by the name of Rabbi Akiba um, uh, said this, he said the Masora, or the individuals that have the um, oral devices to identify what the words are, they are the canon and text of the Old Testament. I'm sorry I'm boring you, but people attack the scripture, and these are the answers to the attacks. And I don't expect you to remember any of this at all. I just want you to know it. You know, are there things that you know you've seen before and you're settled on? This ought to be something you could just see and be settled on. That's the purpose in, uh, in giving you just throwing boring. There's a lot more information in this. I condensed it a lot, believe me. And so my point isn't to just bore you to death in Sunday school. I just want to settle you about the Word of God. So I hope you understand this. Uh, the reading of the words of the Scripture in certain places differed from the written text. What does that mean? There were differences? No, it simply meant that they knew how the words were pronounced. And so a word, a triconsonantal root, could, that's not a very well-worded statement on my, on my part. Uh, but the uh, triconsonantal root could differ, but these individuals um, the, would have known orally how to pronounce the text. And later on, the Masoretes would have put the pointings in, so you just didn't need these guys anymore. And it would be sort of like one of these brilliant things like me, having uh, Brother Chris follow me around and remember everything that I told him to remember and uh, saying, Brother Chris, I need to remember this and this and this and this and this and uh, maybe myself getting a calendar and just writing things down. You understand the difference? But as you could pass it down, Brother Chris could do fine, but maybe it would be a little bit more effort than is necessary if I simply just wrote vowel pointings in and then it would just be settled and I could just know and I wouldn't have to do, you know, uh, keep training somebody in every generation for that. And they were very careful about it. Rules and mnemonic devices were developed uh, mnemonic devices uh, means rhyme and rhythm. Nobody today knows how to read the Hebrew language the way it is by the way of... Um, in other words, the, the scripture during this time period was developed to be read, to be almost chanted or sung. And there were live, uplifts and down of the notes to indicate, instead of it being written what the script is, and by the way, there are today in the Hebrew language there is some indication, I mean, there's some knowledge of how the Scripture is to be read. But they didn't just read the Scripture, like, da 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 Anyway, it would be sung up and down kind of things. There's my song for today. But that's a mnemonic device. This is how you remember this, and this is what it means based on how it's sung. Maybe too complicated for us to catch today because we don't have time, but that's the facts, sort of. Divisions of the text, divisions into verses. Um, they happened in the time period of the Talmudic or Mas Masoretic period. Question, the Sophorim and Masoretes alter the continental text they received from previous generations? The answer is, we found those previous generations of texts and we found out that they didn't alter them. And so that was the value of the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls and all those pre- um, or uh, post-AD 400 texts. Divisions into verses happened in this time period. They didn't number the verses, but they separated the verses. Um, so they didn't put numbering in, but they would separate. In other words, instead of all the verses just running together, they separated them. Uh, they also divided the Old Testament into chapters. And, of course, this 
wasn't a Jewish origin of how they divided them, but it was Christian, and this happened.